my name is Queen Harlan. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic, and that is cosplay for mental health. So I'll give you a bit about me. I'm Queen Harleen, and I'm a professional Harley Quinn cosplayer. I am also a fitness and wellness coach, and I'm so excited to be here today. It's amazing to have something so inclusive for all of us to be able to be a part of. I'm often a guest and judge at ongoing shows as well. I mentioned I'm a vendor, so you have to check out my Etsy shop as Queen Harleen Cosplay. I sell upcycle pieces to add to your cosplay wardrobe, and I make t-shirts for cosplay enthusiasts and that friend who just won't dress up. I love how this con continues to provide creativity and inclusion to everyone worldwide. The one good thing that happened during COVID was that we learned how to connect virtually and how togetherness and emotion is so much more than being in the same space together. So we're going to talk about the link between cosplay and mental health. I think that everyone here will find something that's relatable and something that they can take away. I'll have a Q&A period at the end of this, so please stay with us. So mental health affects everyone. What is mental health? Mental health includes our emotional, physiological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. It also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make healthy choices. Cosplay is a word created from the combination of costume and play. Cosplay is a performance art in which the participants dress up in costumes and makeup, representing characters from anime, video games, television, and film. In addition to creating authentic costumes, the cosplayers also act in character and are usually subject matter experts on whatever character they are expressing or replicating. So with confidence and self-esteem, something that definitely affects everyone on this earth, cosplay can help build confidence and self-esteem. And it's magical when you put on something that you've constructed or compiled and you are recognized by a community that really embraces your character and just embraces the creativity. So being accepted for your efforts is extremely important. The act of participating really has the same effect as going to say a costume party with a costume. People take notice right away. You feel like you're part of the event and people are more likely to approach you. You can go to a con alone. You will meet people and you'll make new connections. Some of us, I think, probably worry about, am I with the group? Do I have people to go with? And just, am I comfortable sharing my interests? But you can go to that con alone. Some people will ask for pictures of your cosplay. Others will compliment what you're wearing. But rarely is there ever a negative response to anyone participating in cosplay. Such positivity makes people feel good about themselves. And receiving praise for participation in something you enjoy is reinforcing. Cosplay can transform both physically and emotionally, especially if you feel like you haven't found your fit in life. If you've ever felt like, say, an outsider looking in or have experienced bullying or wishing that you could feel a different way, cosplay is inclusion. While cosplay can be rather a pricey hobby, it doesn't have to be. We will talk more about cosplay and accessibility later on. So I want to get on to phobias, depression, and anxiety. As claustrophobia and social anxiety are an issue for some, cosplayers can take part in what's called a lobby con, which is attending a convention without buying admission, instead going to the hotel that's hosting the convention and hanging out in the lobby. Where much of the socializing and interaction often happen anyways, it can be away from the vendors, shows, crowds and discussion panels, cosplayers with social anxiety or agoraphobia, fear of uh, going outside or leaving one's home, can enjoy our amazing virtual con right now, as well as choosing to photograph their cosplay build progress or the completion of a cause plan and just share it with your friends or with your followers. You don't have to go to a con to be a cosplayer. For cosplayers suffering from depression, it's important to have this aspect for anyone experiencing depression to stay creative, have something to look forward to, 
and to attain enjoyable goals outside the regular stresses of life. Cosplay can do that for you. Cosplay and loneliness or feeling like an outsider, or maybe even just feeling isolated. Cosplay is community. Like many subcultures, cosplay is a community where the members already share a common interest on site. Simply seeing another person dressed as your favorite character tells you straight off the bat that you enjoy something similar. As I said earlier, you can attend an event alone without feeling shame or insecurity. Cosplay can truly help with all forms of anxiety. Dressing up can be like putting on an avatar for some. It gives you a mask and allows you to safely hide behind if you need, making anxieties and social situations a lot easier to handle. Approaching someone else in a costume is easier because while you may not know the person wearing it, you know the character. So right there, you feel a connection. This often puts people at ease. And even though they know they're not actually talking to the character, it's still a familiar face to speak to. In more recent years, cosplay has exploded so much online and on social media that even going to a convention isn't necessary to be part of this awesome community. So many people don't do well with large venues and large crowds, but through Instagram and other social sites, you can still be active and involved in the cosplay world. It can also be inspiring to see people's builds and connect with other collectors and artists. Another really important point is cosplay and self-discovery. So cosplay helps you discover yourself, which sounds maybe counterintuitive, perhaps, that you can find yourself in being someone else or something else. However, think of it as trying someone on for size. Making yourself seem confident or outgoing because that's the way the character would act in film or books or with others is a way to play the new sort of social approaches. Typically when cosplaying, people do not necessarily act just like their character. However, some do have a lot of fun doing that on stage or just even with friends. Another very important point, gender expression and identity. So through the practice called cross-play, that's cosplaying a gender other than your own. People can utilize cosplay in a way to explore and experiment with gender expression and identity. And this may be a safer avenue to try this kind of expression out in public. And often others around just will accept you as the norm. cosplay and inclusion. There are no limits. Age, race, religion, ability, and gender are not boundaries in cosplay. In so many ways, the more diverse you are, the better. Ultimately, if you can't sew or aren't feeling creative, that's okay. There are so many resources online now to purchase a pre-made costume or show you how to compile one for store-bought pieces. Not every cosplayer has to make their own costume nor do costumes have to be elaborate because everybody knows that what matters is that everyone can participate however they want. There's no criteria other than to be appropriate and respectful. Obviously being respectful of others is very important, especially if you want to be respected yourself. While cosplay may continue to grow and change as a hobby, the benefits remain. Being someone else for a day can offer many benefits and ultimately help people shape who they want to become in their own lives. The relevance of cosplay and how it has changed subculture to mainstream. The origin of cosplay can be traced back to Japan in the 1970s. The term cosplay was coined by a Japanese reporter named No Takahashi who observed fans dress as characters from sci-fi and fantasy movies at a World Con event in Los Angeles. Cosplay quickly caught on in Japan, where it became a popular pastime for fans of anime, manga, and video games. 
Some historians believe that cosplay has origins from Japanese theater, specifically the tradition of kabuki and its use of elaborate costumes and makeup. In the 1990s, cosplay started to become more mainstream at conventions and events. The first cosplay contest was held at the World Science Fiction Convention in Los Angeles in 1984, but it wasn't until the 1990s that cosplay contests became a regular part of convention programming. Cosplay started to attract more attention from the media and became a popular topic on internet forums and on message boards. In the 2000s, cosplay started to gain mainstream attention. Cosplayers were focused on TV and featured in different shows and movies. And cosplay became a popular topic on social media. Cosplay started to become more elaborate and creative, with cosplayers creating intricate costumes and props that were faithful to the original characters. Cosplay started to attract more attention from the fashion industry, when designers creating cosplay-inspired clothing and accessories rose, as well as Etsy artisans and retailers such as Spirit Halloween and cosplay-specific websites. You know, the future of cosplay. Cosplay has come a long way since the early days of Japan in the 1970s. Today, cosplay is a global phenomenon with millions of fans around the world. Cosplay has become a mainstream hobby and is no longer confined to niche events or subcultures. Cosplay has become an important part of popular culture and has even been recognized as an art form with many contest categories that reflect levels of work and craft expertise. Cosplay has a rich history that spans several decades and multiple continents, from its origins in Japan decades ago to its current status as a global phenomenon. Cosplay has come a long way. Cosplay has become an important part of popular culture and has even influenced fashion and design Cosplay has also become more inclusive and diverse in recent years, reflecting the growing diversity of its fan base. As cosplay continues to evolve, it will undoubtedly continue to inspire and entertain fans around the world. Cosplay elitism and stigma. Always remember that cosplay is self-care and a motivating form of self-acceptance and self-actualization. Unfortunately, like all things in life, there can be some negative components. It's important to remember that whether your costume is from a store or your closet, or commissioned or a piece of art that you've crafted over a year, you are a cosplayer. Cosplay elitism exists. However, if you are new, not into art, sewing or crafting, it's okay, you are still a cosplayer. It's only natural that builders, artists, and film smiths want to be recognized for their time, skill, and effort. It should go without saying, do not compare yourself to others. Do not make others feel bad if they bought or commissioned their costume. Do not take credit for anyone else's work. Another cosplayer's costume or talent does not take away from your own. Most competitions have levels beginning from novice as well as competition free catwalks to just show off your cosplay. Try to overcome occasional hate in the community or set things right in a peaceful way. In the end, the most important thing is that cosplayers have fun doing it and feel good about it. Respecting your character. Something that I think is very important is respecting your character. Kids, collectors, and spectators enjoy seeing the magic of cosplay and the characters that we bring to life. It takes away the magic when cosplayers' actions or images are the opposite of what the character stands for. Examples are Disney princesses or superheroes smoking or swearing out in the open, over-sexualizing a character in person or in images, especially for financial gain, and weapons being used as prop on a child or an animal. Cosplay on a budget. Cosplay can be an expensive hobby, but it doesn't have to be. Thrifting, 
closet cosplay and upcycling can be really fun. Enjoy the thrill of the hunt. Get creative and base a character or invent a character from the treasures that you find. Look for pieces that can easily be switched out to create several costumes, especially suits, uniforms. You can even find wigs or make wigs. Uh, trench coats can be another good one because you can use it in a lot of different costumes. The dollar store has several options for fabric, foam, and accessories. The puzzle piece child's play map is the right type of foam, although it's a thick density. You can always use that foam for larger props. Cardboard can be a canvas for anything. You can build over your cardboard or just create your cardboard. Hardware stores can help you think outside of the box. If you can't sew, try fabric gluing the ends of your edges or end with pinking shears, the scissors that have the little jagged edge tops. You can paint thrifted jackets, shoes, or boots. My favorite paint is the Angela's Leather Paint. You can also use it on vegan leather. You can use spray paint on toy shields or toy weapons. Take items apart, invest in a good duct tape. Don't let time restraints, money, or skill level, or crafting ability take away from your experience. Cosplay accessibility. So have you ever wanted to get into foam smithing or thermal plastics, such as Warbla, but you don't have any tools and you don't know where to start? Try maker spaces. My favorite one is Mischief Makers. They offer all levels of workshops that provide everything you need about building, and you can actually leave with an item. So they have ongoing kids programs, as well as workshops for adult cosplayers or adult art enthusiasts to continue or begin your building journey. Very important one, cosplay is not consent. Now, if you've been to a convention, there's no doubt that you've seen large signs that read cosplay is not consent. These are meant to inform attendees of the convention's anti-harassment policy, which states that it has zero tolerance for stalking, intimidation, and unwelcome physical attention. These signs emerged out of a larger movement within the convention world meant to highlight the sexual harassment cosplayers can be subjected to by their fellow attendees. Taking pictures or filming cosplayers without consent is wrong. It's invasive and this has happened to me. The cosplay is not consent movement is relevant online as well. And understand your online privacy settings. A lot of personal information can be shared unintentionally through social media. For example, having geolocation tagging active on your photo apps means that other people can see exactly where you are and when you're there. By making sure that you've got a sense of what we're all sharing, we can empower to share what we want and only what we want with confidence. Now, there are times when we as a cosplayer may not know they're upsetting another cosplayer. So we all have unique individual needs, including physical boundaries and respect for privacy. If someone sets a boundary, we must respect that. Not everyone is comfortable taking pictures or talking to people. Before trying to take a picture with someone, of someone, or even just trying to give them a hug because you recognize their character, you must ask them first and respect those boundaries. The community has embraced this movement and there is no right or wrong way to respond to harassment. Try to immediately tell someone if it has happened to you. Talking to convention staff, enforcers, security, and supports can absolutely increase our safety and the safety of everyone around you. Make a note of what happened, including the time, where you were, and if there were any witnesses. Trust your gut. If you're going to a meetup or a photo shoot, their strength in numbers always tells someone where you are going. Be careful when you're leaving a convention. Whether you're going to your car, public transportation, or accepting a ride from a new friend, tell someone what you were doing and stay on the phone with someone if possible. It's sad that we have to take these precautions. However, being strategic can save your life and the lives of others. So 
this brings us to something I'm very passionate about, which is mindful meditation. Today's meditation is non-denominational. It's a chance to be able to look within yourself and take a moment for yourself. And the mindful meditation will be about finding your authentic self. During the meditation, you will hear me, but you won't see me. It's not very long, and then I'm going to pop back in afterwards and say goodbye to you. And then you're going to stay tuned for a live question and answer with me. So I'll see you right back. Welcome to your mindful meditation for finding your authentic self. Begin by getting comfortable. You may want to sit or lie down. Close your eyes or focus on your gaze on one spot in the room. Start to relax your body, beginning with your feet. Allow a feeling of relaxation to fill your feet, feeling heavy, loose, and relaxed. Relax your ankles now, lower legs and knees. Allow the relaxation to continue, relaxing your upper legs. Let the muscles of your legs completely go, feeling very heavy and relaxed. Relax your hips and pelvis and all the surrounding muscles. Feel your stomach and lower back relaxing. The muscles are giving up their hold. Feel the relaxation in your chest, back and sides feeling very relaxed, very heavy. Let your hands relax all the way from your fingertips to your wrists. Feel your lower arms relaxing, letting go. Relax your elbows and upper arms, loose and heavy. Relax your shoulders, feeling them lowering slightly, finding a comfortable, relaxed position, free from tension. Allow the muscles of your neck to relax, letting go, and relax your face and head. Feel your entire body relaxing even more deeply, becoming completely relaxed, limp, heavy, comfortable. Now turn your attention inward even more deeply inside to find your authentic self. Begin by reflecting upon your values. What is the most important thing to you in life? What do you value? Where does your sense of right and wrong come from? Spend a few moments thinking about your values. As you do this, Try to continue to breathe slow and relaxed, taking a deep breath in for a count of four and out for a count of four. Try to continue this slow, regulated, calming breath pattern throughout this mindful meditation. 
The values you have been thinking of make up part of the core of who you are. If you are being true to your values, these core beliefs will drive your behavior. It feels good to behave in ways that are consistent with your values. For example, if honesty is something you value, this could be reflected in your life by being truthful. If you value your family, perhaps your life reflects this in the time you spend with family members. Think about how your values can be a part of your day-to-day -day life. Now consider what else makes you who you are. Finding your authentic self involves learning who you truly are. Your authentic self is the real you the person you are truly meant to be. Your authentic self is the person you are at the core, the person you can be if nothing holds you back. Now imagine the person you believe yourself to be right now. It's okay if you aren't quite sure who you are. Just picture yourself going about the things you usually do in a typical day. Imagine that you are watching yourself, observing yourself going about your usual activities. See yourself getting up in the morning, going about your day, Imagine the things you would do in a typical day. See yourself doing these activities. Picture this person, you, standing in an empty room. Imagine this person, observe. Now imagine you could strip away all of the things that hold you back from your full potential. Imagine self-doubt dissolving, being replaced with confidence and self-assurance. Picture this person before you and imagine all the things that get in the way of success, such as circumstances, lack of the things that get in the way of success, resources, lack of forgiveness, illness, baggage from the past, anything that is holding this person back in any way See these problems dissolving, disappearing, going away. Now imagine this person standing in the empty room. What is left? Who is this person when all of those barriers are stripped away? The person is you. Imagine who you are at the core. The pure character that is left when there is nothing to get in the way of complete self-expression. You may only have a vague picture in your mind right now. Imagine this person standing in the empty room. What is left? Who is this person when all of those barriers are stripped away? This person is you. Imagine who you are at the core. The 
pure character that is left when there is nothing to get in the way of complete self-expression. You may only have a vague picture in your mind right now. Let's allow that picture to come into focus, becoming more clear. Think of your motivations. What motivates you? What drives your behavior? What catches your interest? Or has caught your interest in the past? What propels you into action? Think about your personality and character traits. The characteristics that are left when all barriers are removed and all fears have gone away. At your fullest potential, your simplest form, with no fears, what traits do you have? Think about your energy. Are you laid back and calm? Or are you energetic? Think about your other characteristics. Are you introverted or extroverted? Quiet or talkative? Are you creative? Are you practical? What sorts of things do you appreciate? What do you admire? What do you like? something that makes you feel happy. What is it? Think of some things you enjoy. Things that you would like to do. Think about all the characteristics of the person who is left when all the barriers and fears are removed. Now, let's create a different picture. Imagine yourself as a young child in a happy moment. See the potential in this child. Who is this young person? What makes this child who they are? Think about the characteristics that you share with this child. In what ways are you similar? In what ways does the current you differ from this child? Think about how you have learned and grown since the time you were a small child. Now picture yourself as the child. See the world through your younger self's eyes. What did you want to be when you grew up? What hopes did you have for your future self? What dreams did you have as a child? The hopes and dreams you had as a child were probably related in some way to your authentic self. Something about your dreams was connected to a part of your true self. What do these aspirations say about who you are? What personal characteristics of yours are related to your childhood dreams. For example, if as a child you dreamed about becoming an astronaut, you probably have some personality traits that relate to this dream, such as being adventurous, curious, maybe analytical. 
Think about your own childhood dreams and see what these dreams say about who you are. Now create one final picture in your mind. Imagine in as much detail as you can the person you want to be. Imagine your ideal self. How would this person behave? What does this person, your authentic self, value? What motivates this ideal self? What personal characteristics are present in this ideal version of you? Imagine all the details of the person you most want to be. Imagine in your mind right now this ideal person is you. This is your authentic self. This is who you are at the core beneath all of life's getting in the way. This is you. Spend a few moments with this image of your authentic self. Now allow yourself step inside this image and fully become this person. Become who you are. For this moment, just be. Simply be your authentic self. Feel a sense of calm and serenity. Secure in who you are, knowing who you are, this is you, your authentic self. You can take this authentic self with you, allowing this true essence of you to shine through in everyday life. Allow your values, personality, and motivations to shine through, to guide your behavior, to make up who you are. You have always been this person. You will always be your authentic self, a positive, confident person, a person you like and appreciate. Underneath the challenges, the baggage, the demands of living life, this is the real you that will always be with you. It's time to reawaken now, to conclude your mindful meditation. Keep the image of your authentic self with you as you go about the rest of your day or evening. Express this true self and allow you to simply be you. Wiggle your fingers, wake up your hands and your arms. Move your toes, allow your feet and legs to wake up. Feel your muscles reawakening and your whole body filling with energy. Open your eyes and sit quietly for a moment while you reorient your surroundings. When you are completely awake and alert, you can return to your usual activities feeling confident
I hope you have enjoyed your mindful meditation for finding your authentic self. If you would like to learn more about wellness, mindful meditation, breath work, live stream fitness, or pre-recorded programming, please do reach out to me and I would love to talk more about it. I hope everyone enjoyed your mindful meditation. It's a wonderful experience to be able to take a moment for yourself. If anyone would like to log on for Q&A and share their thoughts on what we talked about or on their experience with meditation or anything else at all, I am here tonight. So I will see you again. I will see you again. And I'm right here. Hello, Queen Harleen. Welcome. Hi there. I'm so excited to be here. It's great to have you here. So, audience, any questions from the, the peanut gallery um, for Queen Harleen, either about um, mental health or any questions that you guys had based on her presentation? Um, I actually, I have a question that I will ask first once I turn off my... Okay, I'm not gonna turn off my, my camera right now. Um, what got you into cosplay? Well, that's an interesting question. Now I can actually see you on screen on Twitch, but that's totally fine. What you got me into me cosplay full blast was initially during the time of COVID, there was more time to explore and build. I've always been really excited about costumes and playing these other roles and I thought that it would be neat to be able to explore it even further and I actually began doing like cosplay themed fitness classes and stuff during COVID and I wanted to take it one step further and I always cosplay different variations of Harley Quinn. Hi Loki Samurai. I am answering some questions that I'm, I've got coming from a couple of different places. And so right now I'm talking out into space of uh, some questions that I've received. So if you have any questions, please do type them in the chat. I'm excited to answer any kind of questions. No, Loki Samurai, you did not miss anything except you couldn't see the other questions that I was answering. So if anyone has anything that they would like to say, I would love to be able to help you answer anything or if you just want to chat, I think it's a really, really important topic. And I hope that you enjoy the meditation portion. And I hope that you gain something from the mental health portion. Obviously, it affects absolutely everyone. And it's super important to be able to just take that time for yourself, whether it's with meditation or not. It's important to be able to look within yourself and say, I need this time for me. I need to press pause and to also be able to value yourself. You'll say, I'm important and I deserve to take the space for myself. How do you handle getting overwhelmed in a busy convention in the moment? Well, that is an important one. So it's important to take your downtime, to be able to say to yourself, I'm at my limit, I've had enough, and be able to find a space within yourself, whether it's walking out of a convention or whether it's coming home and having a bit of a ritual for yourself, which could be eating something in front of the TV. It could be reading your favorite book. It could be listening to a podcast or an audiobook. Reward yourself with you time in every situation and every day to be able to remind yourself of your worth. No problem. Are there any other questions or comments or stories anyone would like to share? Yes, do not be afraid to walk away for a while. That works in all different parts of life when you have to say, I need to press pause. I always wanted to be able to bridge the gap between cosplay and mental health and wellness because the two go hand in hand, or at least they did for me and a lot of other people I'm sure have experienced this. Being able to say, I need this extra little escape and creativity and everything that I talked about in the, the mental health portion. I think that there really is a link between the two. 
And for me, I sort of found them both at the same time. And I think a lot of us were experiencing many different emotions during COVID. And for me, it was an escape, a release, excitement, all things wound into one. And so I hope that you also enjoy different parts of cosplay for your release and for your wellness too. And if you look within yourself, I'm sure that you probably are, whether you've recognized it or not. It's just so important to be able to express yourself however you want without judgment. It's amazing. It's inclusion. And that's what mental wellness is. Feeling that place within ourselves where we know we're okay. We're strong. We're deserving. We're enough. Do you have any advice for first time costume contestant entries for being on stage? Yes, I think that's an excellent one. And I think that it's important to be able to have somebody there, whether you know them or not, you can always ask another cosplayer to just make eye contact with you and say, you know, I'm gonna come out and I wanna be able to have somebody to focus on. If you can't find somebody to focus on, then I think it's important to just find a space in the room, find a, a vendor table, find a spot on the wall and focus there and be able to say, okay, I'm coming out. I don't see anyone else. This is my focus point. And also just a little bit of breath work, a little bit of just, you know, inhale, exhale before you come out on stage to really relax yourself, relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, relax your mind. I'm very passionate about breath work as part of the mental health, but it's also as part of me obviously being a meditation coach and working in wellness. And a good basic one is to breathe in for four and out for four when you're beginning with breath work. You can also pause in between let's just try one together right now in for four three two and hold three two one and exhale two three four five six until you've released everything you can exhale for four or you can continue on and breathwork works in stages where you can go a lot longer in between the different stages but if you try to do a little bit of just breathing for yourself find that focal point and i think that you'll be okay and every time you go on stage you're going to feel more comfortable and more comfortable and when you get that positive reaction it feels good and it feels like something that you want to do again so thank you, that was an excellent question. Do I ever enter cosplay contests? I have, I have entered cosplay contests. Actually, one of the contests I entered was last year on here. And so I love cosplay contests. I often judge them and I'm often part of events. So I don't go in them a whole lot, but I have before. And I've done a lot of other stuff with stage work. And I think that every time, no matter who you are, you feel a little tense before you got up on stage and that's only natural. But once you're up there, just find that place of release, find that focal point and you will be okay. So how to stop worrying about that guy she tells me not to worry about how to stop getting jealous. Well, jealousy and envy definitely is part of mental wellness and especially relevant in relationships, relationships with friends, relationships with partners. I think that it's important to be able to have communication, to be able to talk to one another and be able to say, okay, oh, hey, how I'm feeling. And this is how I want us to be able to communicate. And also just to be able to look at the situation and say, is this a healthy choice for me? If someone is making you feel like you are jealous or unsure, maybe it's time to look at a situation that just makes you feel happiness and feel honesty and feel loyalty. So if you are not getting that, there's a couple of different things that you could look at. I'm I'm not exactly sure of your full situation, so I hope that, that was helpful. Well, I think that if there's no more questions, if you think of anything else, feel free to reach out to me. You can find me at the information that was in the first of the video, 
but obviously I'm Queen Harleen. You can reach out to me on Discord. You, If you haven't before, you can follow me at Harley underscore Quinn underscore Canada. I hope that you do take time for yourself and I hope that you do take that first step out on stage. I hope that you always feel confident and of worth and know that you are loved, you are important, you are special and you are enough. So let's take one last deep breath together and wrap it up. Let's inhale and exhale. I hope you had fun guys and I will see you soon. Mwah. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night there, Queen Harleen. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>